Tuesday, August 6th. Welcome everybody to the News Channel 3 Astronomical Blog. This is Skyblog 3, keeping you updated on what's going on out there when it comes to sky viewing and events in the Mid-South when it comes to astronomy and science and all kinds of neat things like that. Got a ton of stuff to talk about for today. A good pass of the International Space Station later on tonight at about 9 o'clock. Visibility may be a little bit iffy out there. Take a look at the forecast at the bottom of the screen. You can see about midnight and onwards we're going to be picking up the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms, so there may be the possibility of cloud cover interfering tonight out there, but hopefully at least clear enough to see that and maybe some meteors as well as the Perseid meteor shower really starts to heat up and will be peaking as we go into next weekend, but unfortunately also the nearly full moon might start to interfere with some of the viewing on that. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. A little bit on the steamy side across the Mid-South over the course of the last last few days. Hopefully this will cool you off a little bit from Wednesday, July 31st. One of the last weather reports from the Curiosity rover on Mars, a high temperature of negative 20 and a low temperature in Gale Crater on Mars of 112 degrees below zero. So can hopefully cool you off a little bit there. More information about the remote environmental monitoring station on board the Curiosity rover. Go to Mars. Dot NASA dot gov for more information about what's going on there. In the monitor on the right hand side of your screen, you're looking at live video feed, at least live right now, of the Cygnus cargo craft, which is being held in place by the Canada arm on the International Space Station. It's about to be released and will be heading its way back to Earth within about the next hour, at least when we're recording this at about 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning. NASA is going to be slowly releasing that as it works its way uh, away from the space station slowly. Remember that the International Space Station is orbiting the Earth at about 17,500 miles per hour, so it's going very quickly. So you've got to be very careful with what you fling away from the station and how it goes. This is the live NASA feed. If you'd like to watch that, that's available on Ustream. And to get there, you can go to nasa.gov for more information. We're also monitoring, again, the International Space Station at n2yo.com, showing the space station about ready to head into full daylight. It's getting brighter out there, you can see, as the sunlight starts to reflect off of the foil and the outside of the Cygnus cargo craft. And eventually, in about the next... 30 minutes will be heading its way up and over Central America into the Atlantic Ocean. So a good couple of websites to take a look at there. Miss anything in the way of websites and want to take a look at what we're talking about, uh, just email me at austin.onic at wreg.com so we can let you know a little bit more about what's going on out there. We do have a possible, again, uh, pass of an asteroid coming our direction, getting very close to the Earth. A near-Earth object will be passing on through as we head toward about August 28th. If the distance between the Earth and the Moon is considered one LD or one lunar distance, this asteroid will be passing a little bit farther away from us than that, about twice as far as the Moon is from the Earth. So it's a relatively safe distance, but it's a good indication of why we need to pay attention to what's flying around out there in the solar system. This thing is about uh, 97 meters in diameter, so that's about a tenth of a kilometer, and that's a pretty big chunk of space rock right there. So if you'd like to see a little bit more about what may be winging its way through our solar system, scroll down to the Near Earth Object site of spaceweather.com, very good place to go to for more information on that. From the NOAA Space Weather Observatory, we are in the middle of a minor uh, geomagnetic storm at this point in time. It's not much, but it is enough to kick up a decent aurora, and the aurora forecast is more for the area up and around portions of northern Canada, Alaska, and back into the northern portions of Russia. So we're just not picking up a lot here down closer to the Mid-South. It's very rare to get auroras going that far south across portions of the Midwest and into the Mid-South area. Great website you can go to for more on that 
is earth.nullschool.net, showing you the forecast and where exactly uh, the aurora is. It's a good place to go to to, again, track what's going on. And as of right now, again, showing that self-same location north of Greenland and the North Pole over into Russia and portions of Alaska and Canada out there. So great website to go to. We've featured it several times on our weather overtime segments, if you'd like to see more on that. In the next couple of days, if it's clear enough, look to the east right above sunrise, and you might be able to see the planet Mercury in the constellation of Gemini. That's about 30 minutes before sunrise looking to the east and again mercury's not that bright so you'll have to look pretty close for that more information you can follow more at what's going on in the sky this week from astronomy magazine that's at astronomy.com for more information from earthsky.org information about the fairly close to peaking meteor shower the perseid meteor shower is one of the biggest meteor showers of the year and it should be peaking on the night of August 13th. But again, the full moon might be interfering with that, unfortunately. If that doesn't work for you, if it's going to be too cloudy or too bright and you still want to see what's going on with the meteor shower, you can use livemeteors.com. And as a TV station in Albuquerque, New Mexico, fires a series of energy beams up into the atmosphere as meteors cut through their stream of heated up particles burning through portions of the atmosphere will reflect that signal back to the earth and you can tell by watching where those signals are coming from by listening to the feed when you see those spikes in the signal head upwards you might be able to see or you should be able to see it but you also be able to hear kind of a ghostly ping or a whistle as that meteor burns up in the atmosphere and again does a pretty good job of sending that signal back at a different angle so that's how we can listen to that that's again livemeteors.com if you'd like to know more about that also meteor outlook again week by week great place to go to is ams meteors the american meteor society great place to find out more about if anybody else saw that meteor crashing through the atmosphere that you did uh, reporting fireballs, which direction they came from, if there was any sound, different colors, things like that. Very good place to go to. Again, that's American Meteor Society for more information. Coming up in the next about 340 days, you've got a little bit of time left to get your name on board the Mars 2020 rover. You've got until about the end of September, uh, September 30th at 1159 p.m. Your name will be sent with the rover to Mars as we begin to explore the red planet once again. But again, you need to sign up by September 30th if you want your name on there. I've already got my name on there. Uh, about as of right now, I believe more than about 8 million people have signed up already. And your name will be on a spacecraft on Mars for the rest of time. Pretty good uh, opportunity to look at more going on there. A good place locally for astronomy is going to be the Memphis Astronomical Society that's available at memphisastro.org. They've already had their August meeting. Next meeting will be coming up in September, but later on into this weekend, there should be an observing session coming up at Shelby Farms Park. Now that depends on the weather. So if you'd like to know more about that and if you would be able to show up, if they're going to hold it, they'll get information on social media. All you have to do is go to their website, again, memphisastro.org for more information on that. Good opportunity to see the International Space Station later on tonight, again, if the sky is going to be clear. Right now we're looking at somewhere between about partly cloudy to mostly cloudy on the skies, but this will be a super bright pass of the International Space Station. It'll rise in the northwest, go almost across the peak of the sky, and then fade in the southeast right between Saturn and Jupiter, which should be bright enough out there again, assuming that it is, in fact, bright enough to be seen. You can also track it and see what it looks like again by watching near the bright star Arcturus in the constellation of Booties the Shepherd. Good opportunity to see that for later on tonight and to get out and get your kids introduced to a great science of astronomy, if at all possible. From the InSight lander on Mars in Elysium Planitia, near the equator, a little bit warmer, but not by much, a high temperature of negative 14 and a minimum of 146 degrees below zero, reported on Sol 233. That's a Martian day right there. And that, again, was from about a couple of weeks ago, only sending in sporadic reports at this time. We'll continue to update you on what we've got in the way of of astronomical information, but if you've got updates on events or other things you'd like to see, 
taken out to everybody else via social media, please drop it to my email site, again, austin.onik at wreg.com. Again, the forecast for the next couple of days, those clouds could be interfering, hopefully enough to get the Memphis Astronomical Society's uh, viewing session in this weekend. If that doesn't happen, we'll let you know on News Channel 3. From WREG in downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for our Sky Blog for Tuesday, August 6th.